Welcome back to the Merging Life and Money Show, where personal fulfillment and professional success intersect. I am your host, Marie-Jo César, and today's episode is nothing short of extraordinary. Joining me today is a woman who is not just a, a leader, but a true force of nature in the realm of women's empowerment. She is the founder of Supergirls. She is a college professor and a Wharton MBA graduate. I present to you Jeannie McPhillis, the chief Supergirl of Supergirls and the powerhouse behind the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit. Starting with a vision to disrupt the status quo on college campuses, she has ignited a movement that empowers women of all shapes and sizes to embrace their inner heroes. Her passion for this cause is not just inspiring, it is downright contagious. So today we are not just talking about Jeannie's impressive background in fashion and business or her transition from 7th Avenue to the classroom, we are diving into how she's leveraging her experiences to fuel a crusade of empowerment. With a great education and years of teaching, Jeannie is all about empowering the next generation of women. Most importantly, at the heart of our discussion is a Boss Up Like a Queen Summit, a groundbreaking event that epitomizes Ginny's mission. This summit, which starts on Thursday, the after tomorrow, is not just an event, it is a movement, a rallying cry for women to find their voice, to find their vision and the strength of community. So get ready to be moved, to be motivated and to be part of a conversation that's all about empowering you to embrace your inner hero. Ginny, welcome to the Merging Life and Money Show. Your journey and the creation of the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit are truly inspiring. So let's dive right into the heart of our conversation. Let's dive in. Wait, first, I just want to say thank you for that <laughs> unbelievable welcome. Wow. I, I think I found a new spokesperson for myself, a new PR yeah. queen, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me, could you share with us the inspiration behind the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit and what it represents for women in today's world? Oh, of course, I would love to. First, let me just say, I am honored to be on this woman's show. She, talk about changing the world. This woman is changing the world and disrupting the way we think about money, which is much needed. And MJ is a guest on the summit and she talks all about that and how we must change our mindsets around money. And so I, I feel honored and blessed that I got a shot on this show, Merging Life and Money, because we are part of that. Okay, so the inspiration behind the, the boss up like a queen Leverage the sisterhood to live the life you love because it's all about the sisterhood. That is the inspiration. So throughout my life, whenever I've been up or down, it's always the women in my life that support me, that help me through it, that mentor me, that are there. They're like sisters, whether they are by blood or not. I have one amazing sister by blood, but it is all about the sisterhood. We understand each other. Together, we're better. And I launched Supergirls, which, as MJ mentioned, is a movement to inspire and empower the next generation of women. Because as a professor, I see the disconnect, the white space between what we learn in college and what we need in the real world. And I feel like it's our purpose, our mission as the women that are before them to help them rise. We need each other. There's enough to go around 
And we should be straightening each other's crowns, not taking them, but straightening them. And so it's all about the sisterhood. I firmly believe that I was in a sorority in college. And if I did not have that sorority and those sisters, just one example, I never would have graduated from that school. So it is like with gratitude that I'm inspired to bring this to a bigger place. Yes. Do we want to inspire and empower the next generation? Yes. But it's about what is going to get you to next and boss up. And that is the name of the summit, right? Boss up like a queen. What is it? And I believe that it's about sisters in your network. Who mm-hmm. you play on. They have a different expertise than you maybe, or they know something different, or they had a different experience. Mm-hmm. Lean into that. Great. That's truly, truly inspiring, Ginny. So building on that, how do you believe the summit empowers women to leverage sisterhood in their personal and professional lives? So we've curated 21 boss queens, 21 experts in their own right that are going to lead you into a new way of thinking into a new perspective, whether it's about money, which is what MJ talks about and our relationship with money, for example, or whether it's about parenting or about a career transition or about writing that book that's inside of you that you're trying to, you know it's there and you just can't get it out. It's that thing that you need to do next that you want to do, but for some reason you just can't get there. You're trying really hard by yourself. It's, we don't do it alone, right? No woman is an island. That's right. It sounds to me, the way that you put it, it's it's like a collaboration, right? That collaboration is a key because you you bring about a variety of topics, okay? So what are some of the key ways the summit encourages women to support and work with each other? Okay, so a lot of the speakers or experts have communities Mm -hmm. that they have created in whatever realm they're in, okay? So in my world, I have a community, a a mastermind queens community that I welcome people to join. That's just one. So if you sign up for the summit, it's a free summit. Of course, it's free to join and sign up for and be a part of. And it's 21 days. The interviews are pre-recorded. So every day, it's like a gift. It's like Christmas. Every day for 21 days, you get a gift of a new woman that's going to light the fire under you. And somebody in that 21 boss queen group is going to inspire you, if not one, if not all. Okay. So that is how we're going to create the community. You're going to inspire people to join the various communities and the various movements that these women have created or are talking about. And people say, well, who's your audience? Okay, that is a great question. Who's your audience? Is it all women? It could be, but it's about mindset, okay? It's not just about one generation, baby boomers or Gen Z or whatever. It's about you as a woman, as a female that need to get to the next level. There's something that you wanna do and you need to boss up. And there's something that's holding you back and the women in the community will help support you to get you there. I co-founded a group from my alma mater Wharton called the Wharton Boss Queens. And actually that is a huge inspiration as well as Supergirls. The Supergirls has been going a while and I've been teaching for a while now, but the Wharton Boss Queens, we started a few years ago because we couldn't have our reunion in person during COVID. And we started this group of women and it has gone now. It's almost four years in the running because it's so strong. There's such a connection. They feel such support and it's just being there for each other, bouncing ideas off of each other. We have content. We have people come in. MJ actually came in and enlightened us with the money mindset because there are so many things to enlighten us. Let's get started on that one. And we talk about different topics what's going on in our lives, our kids, or career transitions, what's going on at work, 
whatever it is, but women support each other better. We understand each other better. So the point is this group really inspired me to think, okay, this is one group, a, a sub segment of, of, of a larger group, because I don't care who it is, where the women are that I meet them from and what part of my life. There's always been this posse to, that gets, when they get together, it's so much better. It helps you in whatever you need help with or vice versa. It's, yep. it's give and take. I totally agree with, and we need it as women, because as we all know, I don't know for what reason, but we always feel that we, to a certain point, we are lesser than, although we have proven that we are it, we could we do it. it. We do <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so let, let me carry on and, and ask you another question. So tell me your experiences must have shaped this vision because that's a tall vision. So can you share a personal story that really highlights the power of sisterhood in your life and in your career? Oh my it's, God. It's... I don't know where to start because it's like <laughs> every turn I make or every turn I take in my life through this winding journey, that is what ends up getting me to the next level. And that is what Boss Up Like a Queen is about. What level are you trying to get to in your life? It doesn't have to be this, you don't have to be changing the world, okay? It's just, you are trying to do something in your life and the magic of having other women around. There's just something about women together. So yep. if I, I can absolutely share something, a few stories in my life, actually. So the first one I just alluded to, it's not the first one, but one of the most important and integral ones was when I was in college. I went to the College of William & Mary undergraduate in uh, Virginia, and it was a really challenging academic program. And I was like second in my class in high school and I was all that, right? I was all that. But when I got to college, it was like, what just happened? <laughs> I had an out-of-body experience. I think I lost my, my brain somewhere along the line. And I got really, it, it was super challenging, the school was. And I was super homesick. I was like eight hours from home. I grew up in an Italian family, like really close-knit Italian family. And they were all in my business all the time. <laughs> and I wanted to get away, so I went far away. Meanwhile, as soon as I got there, I was super homesick and the school was so hard and I wasn't getting A's and I gained all this weight and I was just like a mess. Well, I joined the sorority, Delta, 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 and uh, tried Delta and it just changed my world. These women, these sisters, all of a sudden I had a family. And I mean, say what you want about sororities. Sometimes sororities get a bad rap, but they really shouldn't because they really, all they really do is have love in their heart for the sisters and the part of the community. And all they do is just support you in whatever you need to do. And you're coming in at a, a younger age and there's all these older ones that are mentoring you, older sisters. And I don't know, I all of a sudden I had a family. And was I still homesick? Yes, but not as much. And so that was the first real like girly experience. Before that, I was in high school and I was part of the cheerleading squad. And of course that was a big deal. I mean, you know what they said, once a cheerleader, always a cheerleader. So here I am cheering everyone on, you know, cheering all the women on in my life. So the college experience was definitely one. Another experience that will just always burn in my mind is when I went through a divorce. So I was married about 11 years. I just graduated from business school. We had our son, Mark, and then we went through a divorce and it was devastating. I had no idea how devastating it was going to be. I was thinking I needed that. I was thinking I needed to be free. I wanted to find my own way. I got married really young and he's a good guy and all that, but it was really all about me and trying to find my own way. And so that was the divorce. And if I didn't have the women around me, I call it my dark years. There were three years after my divorce. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Three years where I was just, it was a, a hot mess. I had three jobs in three years. I had a young son, he was two, and I had the majority of custody. And it, starting with my live-in nanny, who was like my little sister, in terms of having women to support me. I, I don't know, and my friends, and my sister, and my mom, and my cousins. I mean, I don't know how I would have gotten through without that. There's no way. I mean, men, who wanted to deal with that after going through a divorce? <laughs> you know, 
I wasn't yep. leaning on them. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, John my club. <laughs> For real. Yeah. I've been there, done that. <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, we're in the club together, girlfriend. Yep. We are. Absolutely. Many, many decades ago, but still, those kind of things never go away. And um, so tell me, I hear what you said. I concur with a lot of what you say. So how does a summit address the unique challenges women face in their personal lives? Like what you shared with us. Yeah. So I, we have curated, we are blessed to have many different genres represented in the summit from, uh, I'm just going back. I'm, I'm starting with that money, money mindset and MJ the queen talking about that to, um, parenting, we have someone who's a inner, an inner child expert. And she has mm -hmm. a business called Peak Parenting. And she actually works with a lot of people who are thinking about becoming parents. Mm -hmm. And all the things that go through uh, your body, your mind, your spirit, when you're thinking about having kids and things that you don't, you're not aware of that you're going to pass to these children. Because that's the way it works. You don't know it, but helping you become aware of these things. Nobody tells us how to be parents. There's no rule book, right? There's no rule book. So there's uh, parenting. There's uh, a woman, uh, a speaker who talks about cross-cultural connections in business. She has a, a, a business where she helps companies train people in working cross-culturally. I mean, how important is that today? We are in a global work world, right? You have to understand that is so true. Yeah, that you work in, and I think that is like super empowering. Um, we have someone who also this is a very interesting cross generational. She wrote a book, international bestseller, about working and relating cross generationally. How key mm -hmm. is that inside the workplace? Yep. I mean, I'm a professor, and I'm dealing with, mostly with Gen Zs. And I feel like now that I've been doing that, I have tools in my toolbox. I understand them. I, I know what they're looking for, how to motivate them and inspire them. But do most people have that? Nope. You know, the next generation or the generation above, it's, it's an absolute gift to be able to understand that. And so those are a few of the ideas we have. We also have a woman who it's called, her business is called Defining Moments. And she really believes that people's lives right you have these defining moments in your life in your life that you know really take you to the next level so talking about bossing up and she helps people take their <clears throat> stories and make them into a book a podcast a show whatever you are you know wanting to do and however you want to get that story out that's going to help servicing other people so i think the, the common bond between all these women is that, and, and I think it's, I, I, I'm going to say it's the curated 21 set of beautiful women that we have, but I really think it's uh, most women. We have such big hearts, right? We want to help. We want to help others. We want to put it out there. I mean, why else are we here, right? We're here to serve. And so I think that the summit is a tiny, tiny thing. I mean, yes, I love how you framed it. It's an extraordinary event and it is like a movement. It's just the beginning. Yep. And it's so important. And challenges seem to be most women's middle name, <laughs> doesn't it? For real. <laughs> you know? And um, so. We do it all because we yes. have to all and balance it all. And it's like this, and this, and this is, it's not a coincidence that this movement uh, of Boss Up Like a Queen Summit and this thing happened or was born this year when the Barbie movie came out, okay? Hi, Barbie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. say what you want about Barbie, but the whole uh, movie, it was the first movie to ever reach a billion dollars by a female yep. director. That is definitely history. Historical. Um, yeah, in that, in that field for sure. And the monologue yeah. that, um, that's in there about America that America talks about in, in, in the movie about how we do everything. We are expected to do everything, but we're not expected to be emotional. We're expected to carry it all, but we're, you know, we're not expected to, we're expected to look a certain way, but we're not supposed to think about it. I mean, 
she goes on and on and on. And it's just like, it is like epic. It's so real. Every woman I talk to that has seen that is like, that is yeah. the way it is. What great writing that is. And so, you know, that also inspired me. That movie, I mean, I love Barbie. I I, I feel like I was Barbie in another life. I was <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Barbie. Um, I just think it means so much uh, in, in the progress of, of, of women and where we are today and where we're going. Yep. Talking challenges. And I'm going to take it slightly in a different direction here. What strategy have you found effective for women asserting themselves in the male dominated industry? It's very key and very often we don't want to talk about it, but it's there. It is a reality. Let's talk about it because it affects not just your self worth, it's also affect your paycheck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. it affect it also affect your net worth <laughs> yeah yeah and all, let's talk about that yeah again in line with the whole issue of overcoming challenges what strategies have you found that are effective for okay women? so we talk a lot about this in the Wharton Boss Queens group. Mm -hmm. There are several women, as you can imagine, that are in the financial space. Right. And they are in a, a male dominated or tech, you know, uh, a male dominated industry. Um, I mean, I was in fashion and, and it was very female. <laughs> it was heavy, heavy female. Um, so, so I learned from the community. And those, those, the, these are the strategies that I'm going to talk about right today that, to answer your question. Number one, you need to be authentic. You need to be yourself because we have a special, uh, a, a way of relating and communicating as women, as females that men don't have. And we can use that to our advantage, to develop relationships, to negotiate, to connect. It's really important in business, how you connect with the other people. So being yourself and being an authentic female woman is, it's refreshing. I, I think people want to see that. And I think people are appreciating that. Um, the Number two, develop a community within your organization of like-minded females. I mean, it's the same idea as the, the, the summit and people that wanna boss up, these females that are gravitating towards this summit are people that understand the value of female friendships and female relationships. If you can do this inside of your organization, you are more, uh, you're a stronger force to be reckoned with. Um, and you can help each other because that's what it's about, supporting each other and giving each other ideas. Sometimes if you get, you, if you get stuck in a situation with a male and you just get blinders, you know, you, you don't necessarily know how to move because you're, you, think you, have, you, you think you have it figured out. This is the way I've done. This is what I've tried. And it doesn't work. Other people may have other suggestions that work for them. Success leaves clues. So I think um, I think those two those are two strategies. Those are two things that I would recommend. It's well, interesting yeah, you ask that. There's a there's a woman, another woman on the summit, uh -huh. and Heidi, and she talks about her organization is um, girls who sell, and she has had a career in B2B sales her entire life. And now she's taken to the streets and she's mentoring and teaching women, um, you know, that want a career in sales. And she talks all about the fact that we have special powers as women and how we can develop relationships. I mean, everything is about selling, right? Everything's about selling, whether your career is in sales or whatever you're doing. So it could really benefit anyone. And her hashtag is hashtag sell like a girl. 
This is a perfect segue to my next question because I was about to ask you about mentorship. And you mentioned that this, this queen that is going to be talking is mentoring. So let's talk mentorship. mentorship. I would say that mentorship can really be transformative. Doesn't matter how you look at it, right? So how important is it in women's professional growth and how does a summit facilitate this? Well, some of the, um, it, depending on the queen that you resonate with in mm -hmm. the summit, uh, like I was mentioning, you have different communities, have different programs, have different offerings for mentorship. I know mine does. I have a specific offering for mentorship and mastermind group. And so, you know, within that, we, we help mentor the people in the community. Mm -hmm. I think that, it, it, you know, it depends on the community. It depends on the woman and the female and what you need at the time in terms of a mentor. A mentor. I, I always, uh, I'm going outside the summer for a second, but I always advise, you know, the young women in Supergirls or in, you know, in, in my college community that they should seek out mentors given what they're trying to accomplish. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I know in my own life, I have not done that enough, uh, you know, until recent years, but I have not done that enough. And so it, it and, and I think even going back to business school, and we were talking about this yesterday because I was at lunch with a, a bunch of the Queens and we were talking about how, when we were there, we did not, and this was a long time ago, we did not do this. We did not step out and make this group of women and have this community and get together and create the Wharton women's circles, which they have now. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, unfortunately, it wasn't our, our minds. We were still trying to be men. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I think um, going back to inside the summit and how we can help with that. I think mentoring is in the moment. Uh, one of my old mentors Actually, I interviewed her once for a podcast I was doing, and this is something she said, Ode to Jude right now. Mentoring mm -hmm. is in the moment. It is not necessarily if someone's older or more experienced. Oh, no, no, no. In the no, moment, no. it's about what do you need? What do you need? How can I help you in the moment? I mean, I have students that I feel like mentor me on certain things. Absolutely. Right? I mean, it's a nudge requirement to be a mentor, I could tell you. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it helps and it makes a difference. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it depends on the circumstance, I would say, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, it really is. And it really is. What do you need? Like, what do you need? And where are you going? And how are you feeling about that? And it's, it's just about getting to know these women and getting to know what they need and what they want. And we're, you know, how can we serve? How can we serve? Does it mean oh, matching yeah. you up with one person? Okay. Does it mean being part of a community? Okay. Does it mean you need a coach? Yes. It, it's, it's really, you know, like, like it just really depends on who they are. Oh yeah. And you know, as I always say, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, if we want to be a better version of ourselves, we need help. Absolutely. Okay? We need help. I mean, you look at the, well, do you know of any Olympic athlete best in the world? who do not have a coach. Yeah. I don't know of any. I don't know of any. No. So in order to be on top of your game, you have to have someone not doing it for you, but certainly cheering you on and, and supporting you, you know? And, and, and going providing and, a different perspective. That's right. That's because right. Because MJ, like we, some of us, you know, some of us have partners that are men mm -hmm. and it's like, are, they can be supportive, but they don't get it all the time. They just they don't get it. They don't hit the right nerve. They try to be empathy, empathetic. They try to, and it's like, you don't, you don't get it. And it's like, you go, okay, they're trying. Yeah. Points, kudos for trying, but they don't get it because they can't, because they're just not us. You know, I, I really think that people saw vulnerability as a weakness back then. Time is changing. Where's our turning and vulnerability in my view currently is a strength to be able to show that you need the help and not be afraid to ask for it. That's strength. Okay. Because you really want to be a better version of yourself. 
So you, you don't see any issues in reaching out and have a community and ask questions. And that's exactly what I want to do with money, talking about money. Lift the veil, pull the curtains, and let's get talking about it. Exactly. So, exactly. Get behind yeah. the curtain. That's yeah. the only way. And MJ, I don't want to steal your thunder, but th this is still resonating with me. Like I, 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 I met MJ, I don't know, a couple months ago. And some of the things she says, I, I like wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh my God. But she, <laughs> she says, I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to create any nightmares. No, 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 no. It's not a nightmare. It's like, she's right. Like, we have to change the way we think about money. Yeah. We, we, we have to change it. We have to make it like honest and we have to talk about it. And it's not some bad secret. You know, it's a lot like addiction, you know, like people that have addictions and they, they, they get their shame. Like they don't want to talk about it, but the only way they get well mm -hmm. is by sharing. By sharing. So yep. Anyway, let us not move too far away from our super day coming up. And another thing that I want to talk to you about that is also very much part of the whole boss, boss up process, if I may call it that, is networking. Okay. Networking is so yeah. crucial. So could you share some tips for women looking to expand their professional network while maintaining genuine connections because sometimes people get it wrong the networking the connection and the whole thing what can you share with our audience today that would get them to understand that networking is a very crucial element of a community i mean you know your network is your net worth right but yeah. you're you're a net worth i'm, I'm speaking your language mj <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you need, you need, and I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the, I preach this all the time, um, to the students too, but you should be networking all the time and, and people misconstrue the word. They think it's like a dirty word. All it is, is about building relationships. That's what it is. You, you can just, you, you, if you, you need to reach out to people that you resonate with, that you think are cool, that you think are, you know you have something in common with, that's who you should be net, networking with. You should also be in your, in my opinion, you should be in women women's groups. I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, I, I must, right now, I must have like four or five different women's groups that I'm a part of because women will serve each other, right? We'll shine each other's crowns. And we won't, I mean, you know, there are always going to be outliers, but for the most part, people are happy to help. And so networking is about building relationships no matter where you are in life, what your stage of life is. Uh, you're in college, you should be networking with your classmates because those are the people, those are your peers, and you, and you never know where they're going to go, or alumni. You should be reaching out and connecting on LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is an amazing network networking platform that we have these days that we didn't have years ago, and it makes it so much easier, right? So online, there's that. There's also on you know social media. We network in social media all the time. I reach out to people I see that I think are super cool and I just reach out and connect with them. Um, there's a woman who, she's an unbelievable author. I really wanted to have her on the summit, but she's publishing four books. Oh, wow. <laughs> at once. <laughs> and uh, her name is Raven, the Raven Wolf. And she, <clears throat> her words resonate with me so much that I just reached out to her and I started talking to her and now we're friends. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know who can, you know, who's going to be there and how also how you're going to help someone else. So that's the yeah. other part about networking. Yeah, Always totally. approach it from a gratitude perspective. Like, okay. Yeah. I mean, someone helped me the other day and I was, I was talking to them and I said, listen, how can I help you in return? You have been so gracious and so kind. And you know, how can I help you in return? What can I do? Can I make an introduction? And they may say, no, there's nothing you can do right now, but they, they will appreciate the fact that you made that offer. You reach out. Yeah, yeah, that's important. So my next point that I want to touch on, because I want to get you to talk about a few things that I think people should be looking forward to when registering for the summit, balancing 
coy and personal life. And, I, and I'm saying balancing, but to me, it's more harmonizing those two because balance is static. So it's not about balance. It's about harmonizing your coir and your personal life. And that is very, a common challenge, whether or not we want to accept it. It is not something that comes easy. So how does a summit help women find this harmony with their life? Um, <clears throat> many of the stories that you're going to hear on the summit are about women who have delicately found this harmony. So it's going to, you know, they're going to inspire you like, like never before. You're, you're going to hear from people that were maybe in corporate America and have figured out a way to, you know, work on their own terms. Mm -hmm. um, and then, cause they needed, they, they wanted that kind of a balance or they wanted to give back. So they figured out a way to do that. And that helps them harmonize when you're in your purpose. Listen, your job doesn't have to be your purpose. Okay. That, that it does not have to be, it's not, you know, to, for you to be harmonized. Hopefully, hopefully it's not. <laughs> right? I mean, a lot of people think I, I need to be doing, um, you know, I, I need do what you love. The money will follow. Yeah. That, okay. If, if you're, if you're happy, then you're definitely going to do well. Probably, you know, probably going to do better than if you weren't. Happiness is fleeting. <laughs> it is. I think that, I think that listening to other stories on the summit, listening to the stories mm -hmm. and hearing how they did it in different ways of approaching it yeah. is important because it gives you perspective and it gives you hope. A beautiful girl is like hope dancing in stiletto heels. So yep. I think if you hear people that are, you know, making it, doing it, figuring it out in their life, no matter what part of their life they're in, whether they're in their, you know, early part, mid, late, there's always things you can learn. And the more you surround yourself with these kind of women like that are on the summit, the women that are giving back and doing really cool things and bossing up, <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, what you do. it's inspiring. You know, yeah. We are all at different stage in our life and life is a cycle. So I, I totally agree with this. So on the topic of harmony <laughs> rather than balance, what advice would you give to women who feel overwhelmed by the pressure to excel in every aspect of their lives. I was there before. Okay. <laughs> well, let's ask you first. <laughs> let's ask you first because uh, um, MJ is very humble, but MJ has created this super cool platform. I mean, even before we got on today on the podcast and she was talking about all the ways that you're going to be able to experience a podcast. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Okay. And it was foreign to her prior to that. Right. She had a. Oh, yeah, totally. Yep. That's totally. Right? Yep. Yep. And so what did you do? What did I do? Let, let me rewind the tape a little. When you're a kid, I'm, I'm young enough, and but old enough that I'm one of those generation where my mother worked as well as my father. And one thing that I forgot is that we had help. My maternal grandmother spent a lot of time with us throughout the week while my parents were working. And if you look and you say, oh, everything works like clockwork when you were little. Everything was just fitting right in. So here I am, left my country, moved to another place and get married, have a family. And of course I want to be the best wife and the best mother and the best employee and the best of everything until you realize that, okay, everybody's day has 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So do you think that you are special and you got a little bit more hours than anybody else? <laughs> took me a little while <laughs> to really figure it out because it was all about pleasing everybody, making sure that everybody was okay. Right. That's until... a problem you have as women. Yeah. Right. So, it's a challenge, I would say. Not a yeah, so and I think I had to take a step back 
and breathe a little bit and say, okay, what's in it for me? The kids don't ask to be here. Okay, take that. So you got to take care of your kids. You know, you, you're a mother. So did you, you get to a point you where you were, did you get to a point where you were like this, like a breaking point? Like we were talking about defining moments. Was there something that happened? That was just like- What happened really was kids went off to school. And one thing that started to resonate with me more and more, I would ask my now ex-husband, what are we having for dinner tonight? I would call in a midday or something. And that was the answer. And I became sick and tired of this. I don't know situation. I've been to every store. They don't sell. I don't know. So how can we have, I don't know for dinner. <laughs> I used to say that to my son. I don't know lives in the closet. Okay. I, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, so I, this really started to, to, to get under my skin and, and then, okay, it's vacation time. So what, what do you think we should be coming, going this year? Oh, I don't know. You choose. And as you really seeing the wall closing on, on you, the, the kids are gone. This were the moment that really got to me. Yeah. Nobody cares. It seems. Don't get me wrong. But you know that the, when you are at that stage of your life, that's what comes to your face. And nobody seems to yeah, care. Who's, I'm, I'm me. who's taking yeah. care of me? I'm yeah. taking care of everyone else. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you know? So you asked me what was a defining moment. The defining wo- moment was I was tired of being the go-to person for every aspect of everybody else's life. It's too hard. You can't. You can't do it. Yeah. It's impossible. You, you don't really realize that until the year, until years and years later, because you are so caught up in trying to be the best person that you could be and the definition of best is more like pleasing somebody else and forgetting that you are the main actor and you have to fill you know your tank before you can fill others but we don't know that like we don't like my mother was like that she 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 uh, she's a little different now thankfully <laughs> yeah. yeah it was all yeah. about everybody else <laughs> herself yeah. And, and then, and, you know, and, then she, you start to get resentful after a while. It's too much. You know, you yeah, can't and, and I, I could tell you that's when I discover the whole concept of self. Self-care is so important. How does the summit address this topic? And why is it crucial for women's empowerment? Well, because if it's not, if we don't, we do have a, we do have a, a beautiful queen who uh, talks about wellness on the summit and she actually specializes in yin yoga. Okay. And she, if anyone's ever done yin, it's very slow. The moves, you hold the positions for like three minutes Mm. and you really, uh, there's something about the fascia. I don't know. She talks all about it and the, and the, and the, the muscles and the bones and how everything is connected, but she likens this yoga practice to life because it's like you can be you can't you don't always have to be reactionary you 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 can you you know you can just let stuff happen and then figure out what you're going to do instead of just you know reacting 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 but just taking time and that's kind of what you said MJ right taking mm-hmm. a step back yep. taking a breath this yoga practice and i i've been i've been doing it and it makes a huge difference instead of going through life like a bull in a china shop you're yeah. more thoughtful intentional about your responses to people about how you handle things yeah you're more patient you know it's it, it's a whole thing so um i think that this is there's a, actually a few people to talk about self care but this that's great. That's yin, great. yeah the, the yin yoga Specifically, I think it's it's really um, a great prescription for just calming down and and listening to yourself and thinking and thinking. Yeah, self care is important. Now I'm looking at the club, but I still have a few questions for you. So let me try and get them to you as quick as I can. I talk too much. We talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get along so well. You know, okay. there are many misconceptions about women leadership so what are some of that the summit um aims to to dispel so okay uh 
Yeah, I think it's 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 again about. I'm trying to think of the women, um, the leadership. Well, the there is a specifically a a queen who talks about. Oh my God! There's there, there's some there's actually they talk a, a few of them talk about leadership because a few of them have solutions for, you know, corporate challenges, right? So like, how do we deal with the selling? The, the sell like a girl to me that mm-hmm. that a, a lot of that is about leadership. It's about how you are thinking um, and empathizing, you know, with others. And I think leadership is about. Uh, I use I use a I'm going to use a reference right now. Um, um, a textbook that I use in my creative leadership course, and it's called Leadership Reinvented, and mm-hmm. it focuses on four values: servitude, innovation, diversity, and empathy. And so there are a few um, coaches inside of the summit who are leadership coaches. They help women um, think about how to be a better leader inside of the company or in your own company. But mm-hmm. to your point, MJ, everyone mm-hmm. needs a coach. Yeah. And these, these women have were, you know, they had corporate careers prior to being coaches, which gives them a great perspective and a, empathy for their clients. Um, and they have different tools. I don't want to get, I don't want to steal the thunder from them because there's some great tools that they talk yeah, about. Well, hey, it's a path. Yeah. I've been there myself. As I said to you, I will never not have a coach. <laughs> and in, in different areas, sometimes you need a money coach. I just needed one because I was in corporate for so long and I wanted to have my own shop. And, you know, it's the mindset is different. As I mentioned during our talk uh, last month, I think it's different to be an employee and uh, and to be an, an employer. So when you transition from not having to worry about your paycheck, doesn't matter what, to making sure that you are the one determining the paycheck and also determining your role, that's totally different. So totally different. It's totally the different script. mindset shift. <laughs> <laughs> you, so do you, the coach that you have, MJ, is a, a business coach? Yep. I got a business coach, yes. And I will, so far, and I, I did from the time I stepped down from corporate. And is it, a, is it female? Is it a female? Yes. In fact, I have two of them and they're all females. Two of, two of them are females. <laughs> it, just, it just happened that way, you know? I, I wasn't spe- specifically looking... I'm looking at, okay, what you, what, what can you do for me? Right. You know, this, this is my pain point. What would, would my, pres- my prescription be? <laughs> so, and uh, so far, so good. I mean, I've been working with the last set of coaches that I have for the past three, almost four years now. And I'm very satisfied. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely want to want to talk to you about them. Yeah, oh. sure. Sure. Yeah, I, definitely want to talk to them about I would them. recommend them any day, any time. <laughs> Don't yeah, I would love to get them into the community. And also, um, I've had, in, in terms of coaches, I've had male coaches and female coaches, um, both, you know, both adequate, both do the job, but I definitely feel I, I get more from, I, I get more from the females is probably the way I think, you know, my... Well, I guess, you know, it is it is a work in progress. It doesn't matter how we slice the pie. I mean... We come from a society with norms. We were taught to believe that men are superior to a certain extent. And then, although we, it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still there. And then we got to continue and persist and make sure that we break the cycle. And I must say that the millennial and the Gen Z are definitely holding their own, but they, they still need to be coached. You cannot just blow up the past you got to to look at the past to inspire you to a certain extent so you don't have to rewrite <laughs> the, the whole notion right but suddenly we got to stop it we got to stop it and stop it now in order for things to reach an even playing field because we've been talking about it for a long time okay the gender pay gap and the this is that and the male this and the male that okay what are we really doing in earnest what are we really to, doing? To change the landscape. 
Okay, we still refuse to talk about money openly. And that is a problem. It so is. until I feel we are like able... You, I feel like you need to run for president. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> a president, I'm, I'm the president of my house. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But, but you understand what I'm saying? We've been talking and I've been talking about it, all the, the issues that we're facing and the this and the that, and uh, everybody's looking at it. But we're making some headways. I hate to, come, uh, to, to bring it back to finance. It's like, oh, financial literacy oh, in America, this is terrible. Da, 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 da. How many schools have it as a compulsory subject? So if you really mean it, you must put it in the schools, right? And, yeah. And and yep. then the parents need to be educated because the kids are going to learn something. But when they go home, they're dealing with parents that are living on credit cards. So the parents got to stop that too. It's like rich dad, poor dad. And that book been around for 20 plus years. You cannot be literate on something if you're not educated about it. So education comes first, then you become literate. You can't yeah. test me on a subject I never studied the subject, right? <laughs> for, for, for whatever reason, yeah, it's not in the school. It's not in the education system. It's not in there. We have it in our curriculum in college, but it, sh it should be earlier than that. Yeah, they should. I can't remember where it was. It was before the pandemic. Around Christmas time in the mall, the little kids sat on centers taking pictures and center said well, what you want and blah 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 so the, the little kids went to to the mom and so the mommy said well, you, you can't just do that like that you got to to, to buy it so he, he turned around and asked center if he takes credit cards <laughs> <laughs> and, and he, he went what back to the mom and said, well, it's you gotta find out if you can yes. take the credit card so I, you could buy me my gift and you could bring it to me at christmas yeah. i'm talking about before the pandemic. And that kid could not be any more than three. And oh, that kid God. knew about a credit card. So I'm saying all that to say that those kind of training could be included in the school curriculum. That's right. A, the, the language that those kids understand. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. You know, the same thing that financial wellness should be taught at work so that the, the employers have better employees and their bottom line at the end of the day is better. And they have a bunch of happy people working for them. mental health. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. all goes back to your mental exactly. health. That's oh, what it is. is. We're, we're getting further and further away from the summit, but this is going to be the byproduct of that summit. So we got to make sure that whatever conversation we have does not stop after the 21 days. It's just the beginning. So yeah, well, that, that, I'm just saying, you know, we, we are in that together, sister. We're in that together, <laughs> sister. I care. And if you guys you need to go into the summit to hear more from, from MJ, I know you hear a lot of her on this channel. But yeah, so. You can't hear enough. You cannot hear enough of that. <laughs> so as we near the end of our conversation, what are some of the key takeaways you hope attendees will gain from the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit? Okay, so the key takeaways are you're going to walk away with confidence and the motivation to do what it is that you want to do. Guaranteed, you're going to walk away with that. You're going to meet some boss-ass queens that are just fire, that you're going to connect with and be able to resonate with and be able to mastermind with. That is an absolute takeaway. Yeah, great. There are all, all kinds of free gifts from every single speaker queen in the queen's court. There's all kinds of free gifts. I don't wanna tell you what they are right now. No, they, you can't, it's not a secret, but it's a secret. So once you sign up, you'll know. So as we wrap up today's enlightening episode, I want to <laughs> express my immense gratitude and excitement. It's not Thank you. Uh, just every day that we get to converse with someone as inspiring as you, Jean. Oh, but today, right 
Right back at I you. I also have a special announcement to share, which is no longer special because you already mentioned it. I will be one of the 21 speakers at the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit and hosting by the amazing Jeannie. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, this summit is not just an event. It is a convergence of powerful voices, of powerful insight, and it is a celebration of women's empowerment. It is going to move you. Absolutely. Okay. It's going, to, it's going to teach us how, how to support each other, mm-hmm. how to rise together and how to embrace our inner heroes. I love so that. To, that to is my, so perfect. Yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better. That is <laughs> so so why I didn't need to say it. Yeah, to my followers and my subscribers and every woman listening right now, I extend a heartfelt invitation to join us on this incredible free summit starting on Thursday, November yes. the 16th. Oh, that is a wonderful invitation. How can you pass that up? Boss.com. That's all you need to do. Yes. And, and just, thank you. I, I, you. I can't even, I just want to go through, I want to jump through here and just <laughs> Well, Jimmy, <laughs> your work with the Boss of Like a Queen Summit is a testament to your dedication to empowering women so thank you thank you thank you Let for not only you. being my guest today right? but for being a guiding light of inspiration and leadership oh my gosh I'm okay so even. i'm over the moon right now this is and, <laughs> and to our listeners this is your chance to be part of something truly truly special So let's get together, Uh, let's share our stories, uh, and and let us support each other in our journey. That's right. Bring your crown, because we will be shining it and shining your light, okay? So, So Jenny, before we conclude, I am sure that many of our listeners are as excited as I am about the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit. I am excited. So could you share with us where they can go to register for yes, this incredible ma'am. event? And yeah. I, if, Fancy if you look QR. at the scroll underneath the screen, the last piece is, again, a link. So please pay attention to that link or better still, take a, a, a scan of the QR code and you will know where to go to register. We are looking forward to having as many women as possible, listening into that summit for 21 days. That is a gift, people. We, okay. We are, yes, it is. It is absolutely a gift. Bossuplikeaqueen.com. To MJ's point, she has it all get right here for you. you can't miss it. Wow. Bossuplikeaqueen.com. Yeah, we're expecting over a hundred thousand people on the summit. And hey. yeah, and make sure to look to check on both Jeannie's and mine. Social media, we will be there on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter. You cannot afford to miss this summit. So my listeners, as you know, I like to end my show with a quote. And today I chose one from Helen Keller. And it reads, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Thank you once again, Ginny, for being a shining example of what it means to lead with vision, passion, and a deep commitment to empowering others. And thank you to all my listeners for tuning in to, to the Merging Life and Money Show today. I am your host, marie jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, stay empowered, stay connected, and continue merging life and money. Woo!